Hey everybody, I'm Tim Faulkner here from Grand Reptile Park and Aussie Ark, and I'm going to throw it straight over to Tim because he's going to take you on a special trip. So over to you, Tim. Thank you, Ricky. Uh, hi there, Tim Faulkner, uh, Director of Australian Reptile Park uh, and Executive Director, Aussie Ark. Uh, the Reptile Park is a wildlife tourism facility. Aussie Ark is a dedicated conservation facility. Both organisations are very committed to Australian native wildlife conservation. Our skill set uh, is, is really captive management and that's really complementary to turtles to addressing something like a major threat to fox because we can captive breed, cut the fox out and then through an incredible partnership like this, that's where our expertise ends realistically. So you've got all these incredible applied or scientists using applied science and that means getting the outcome. Uh, and that what makes us very excited uh, about the partnerships generally. We're very committed to freshwater turtles. A little bit of a nuanced approach in our region, in New South Wales. And for us, um, that's three species. There's also benefits to others, but that's the Manning River turtle, the Bells River turtle, and the Hunter River turtle are the three that we're specifically working with. Uh, I like making a mention here that when you think about those species or another, uh, the, the Bellinger River turtle, there's less than 500 Bellinger River turtle, 500. And even of the other species I mentioned, there's thousands, although tens of thousands. And when you think about this, we know so much about pandas or orangutans or elephants. Consider this, there are 500,000 elephants still in the wild. There are 120,000 orangutans still in the wild. And there's less than 10,000 of most of these turtles. And they, they're typically not viewed as so sexy, but to us as Australians, they should be. They're really unique and they've been here for all of history and that means they need our help. Um, I want to talk about some recent experiences because they're still forefront of my mind. That 2019-20 wildfire season that we remember it as, you know, we really ticked into gear there um, in the wild and went into what we knew and populations that we knew of uh, turtles, particularly Hunter River turtles and Manning River turtles, the fires were bad. I mean, a billion animals lost, you know, so just so catastrophic. But the drought was equally as bad, and so was the unsustainable harvest of water from rivers. I, I personally witnessed, you know, pools that for all of history, through catastrophic droughts, you know, over millennia, would have held water. We sucked them dry. And this is an important part where community gets involved because community champions in local areas are important because that's the type of person that can just stop, you know, hey, just leave a bit of water there. But that's not what happened. And so we intervened and, you know, we saved over 500 turtles from imminent death in a hot, baking, muddy pond. Sadly, you know, I found over 500 perish to cease because we couldn't be everywhere at once. But the more people out there in community, uh, the better for all the turtles. Um, I'd like to say we're here at the Reptile Park. Uh, it's a co-Reptile Park Aussie Ark initiative, of course, with this partnership, but noting again, um, our skill set is the captive management of these species to then complement what the scientists are doing. Um, I like, and I can't get this thought out of my head, I mean, one million hatchlings back in the wild. Just think about that for a minute and think of one million turtles somewhere, you know, in a, what does that even look like? But I can tell you what it looks like in our rivers, and it's a very, very pretty picture. Um, our facilities are quite unique in that we are a wildlife tourism facility, but the not-for-profit Aussie Ark, um, you know, there's a big dotted line between us. And so, of course, people can come here and visit and experience turtles. Um, but at the same t time, uh, with Ricky and, and, and this partnership, um, you know, the ability to come here and learn about turtle sat, the ability to come here and look at how to create nesting sites and other bits and pieces, um, that's what makes the citizen science part of it and the tools you can learn from it spectacular. Um, and that's really, really exciting. Now, I'm going to do a really quick look around the facilities. Um, we're limited for time. And I know you're just going to have to come and have a better look. I can only do my best. Behind me, we've got the Hunter River Turtle. Now, there's only around 20 founders in here presently. Um, they're going to be difficult to speak, uh, see, okay? So have a Google. Hunter River Turtle lives in one river system in Australia. Um, come over this side. If you look down the back here, we've got a Bells River Turtle facility. Um, very hard to see. I appreciate that. Come with me. Excuse the materials, but with the turtles, it's really important for their security 
and also for biosecurity. So this is lock and key facility. But what you can see behind us here uh, is a Manning River Turtle facility. It's home, uh, not yet, but it's, it will be a capacity at about 60 adult turtles. And if we need to make that 60, 120 or 300 to get the number of hatchlings that this project wants, then that's what we'll do. But the adults breed uh, in very wild-like environments. The water's controlled, the water quality's controlled, the temperature's controlled, they've got their breeding sites, but come into the best part. Follow me again. I did mention around biosecurity. So this might just be the tiniest little bit clunky while I whip my boots off and get rid of them. Brody, there's your boots. I'm going to take your phone for a second. So we're in now to, uh, and it'll be a little echoey, but we're into uh, our turtle lab. And so this is where uh, we incubate the eggs, and this is where the hatchlings are reared, uh, ready to hand over to this project for release. Now, if you have a look just here next to me, you can't see anything. And this is because on the 12th of November, the first happy born Manny River turtles go back to the wild. The reason this is black is because we don't want them to see us. We don't want them to associate people with food, etc., etc. You get the idea. These turtles aren't being released until February. So you can come and have a little look here. And while you do that, I'm going to pop some gloves on. Right. Back to me. So this is uh, a 12 month old Manning River turtle. Uh, they're one of Australia's most beautiful turtles. Really nice yellow markings. If you have a look at the bottom side of the shell, the plastron, um, they've got individual markings. You can actually identify the turtles by that. So they're a really stunning turtle. And this is a good size. I mean, remember, as I said, our skill set is Cathy Freely. But we need to hand these over now and you know, a million of these with many partners. But essentially, at this size as well, and this is called head starting, uh, we can let them go tiny, 20 cent piece size. And this is up to the academics, the scientists. But we can also let them go this size. And that can alleviate other threats like feral fish, carp or trout, or even uh, native fish like bass and other things that might eat them and give them the best chance for survival. Let's come back outside. You can leave those boots on road while we exit and then I'll sort them out later. So thank you for a, a very rushed little tour. Um, I guess before I hand over, I just want to compliment um, the integrity of this overarching program. People get involved. I mean, this is a bunch and a, 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 a team that's really applying science and that means it has outcomes. Things get better for native wildlife. Uh, and that's my sincerest compliment. We're just happy to be a part of it. Uh, so thank you very much for that. Over and out, Tim Bogner. Thanks, Tim.